pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Supervisor Vecchio. Here. Councilman Wareheim. Here. Councilman Creighton. Here. Councilwoman Nowak. Here. I don't think this is on. Sitting as a Board of Water Commission, is the Board of Water Commission to approve the minutes of 2000 of uh, December 17, Tuesday, 2013, and to make a transfer as for item number two on the agenda, and enter an agreement with several county water authorities to install water mains. Councilwoman Nolan? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Becchio? Yes. We're reconvened in the town board under correspondence. We have a first reading for a, a run walk for Judy's run for stroke awareness. First reading for Kings Park Youth Organization opening day parade. We have uh, on file with the, the uh, town clerk building department report <coughs> and a parade run walk for the Mount Pleasant Elementary School World Race first reading. Anybody wish to be heard for or against the granting of those permits? We'll move on. Town board to authorize the clerk to advertise the following bids. Uh, bid number for steel stock to be returned <coughs> on February 13th. A bid for a sailboat for recreation department sailing lessons also returned on February 13th. Councilman Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town board to approve the following the minutes of uh, Thursday, November 21st, 2013. The extension of an agreement with LK McLean Associates. Authorize the clerk to issue parade walk permit to the Greater Long Island Run. Authorize the clerk to issue parade walk to the Smithtown Christian School. Retain the servants of Harry B. Besunder as a special trial counsel. Authorize the payment of an intercompany reimbursement to State Farm. An amendment to the town board resolution heard at the town board meeting held December 17, 2013, to read as printed in the agenda. Acceptance of recertification of the record of activities filed by the town clerk. Uh, Maureen Fiorello, director of school age child care and staff to attend a conference for child care providers on Saturday, February 1. Acceptance of a recertification of the record filed by Councilman Thomas McCarvey. Appointment of Armand de Rose, Lawrence Corey, and Paul Hedger as a small municipal service, separate storm sewer system management program advisory committee. Reappointment of Mark Hessen, Barbara Bernard, Richard Parker, Thelma Drew, William Holtz, Benjamin Piscors, and Michael Chilson to the Smithtown Anti Bias Task Force. Rejection of all proposals received in connection with a Proposal for a radio system. Town attorney to retain the services of Cushman Wakefield in regard to certiorari matters for this country club. Bay constables Charles Malloy, Donnie Edwin, Thomas McLaughlin to attend the LSG service ice rescue technician class. Uh, approval of 2014 procurement guidelines. Town board to approve an increase of water rates of Smithtown Water District and the St. James Water District pursuant to Section 312 of the Article 4, Chapter 342 of the Code, extension of the agreement with Suffolk County Archaeological Association, <coughs> the use at Hyde Farm, sale of surplus municipal service facility equipment, satisfactions of mortgage for participating home improvement clients, and that concludes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town Board, after due study and deliberation, to issue a negative declaration of EIS is not necessary in the matter of an application of site plan approval by Joseph Bazetta for competition infinity. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? <coughs> Town board to approve the transfers as listed in the agenda as A through P. 
Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman uh, Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town board to authorize the supervisor to execute the following on a form approved by the town of 30, town attorney, a third party collateral agreement with the town as depositor, third party collateral agreement with the town as a depositor. Uh, the first one is JP Morgan Chase, second one, Capital One. Third party collateral agreement with the town as a depositor, First National Bank of Long Island. An agreement on behalf of the Comac Ambulance District with the Comac Volunteer Ambulance Corps, effective January 1, 2014. An agreement on behalf of the Hot Park Ambulance District with the Central Islip Hot Park Volunteer Ambulance Corps, effective January 1st. Budget allocation agreement with Smith Town Performing Arts. Budget allocation agreement for Smith Town Historical Society. And budget allocation agreement with Smith Town Township Art Council. Specialized service agreement with the Times, with the Times of Kids and Inc. in the Recreation Department. Special services agreement with Clips Gymnastics with the Recreation Department. Agreement with James Faith Entertainment to provide entertainment services uh, for the, for the uh, Recreation Department. Hold harmless agreement between the town and Rainier Realty concerning a town-owned surveillance camera, specialized service agreement with Gwen DeFraselli to provide certified Tai Chi classes for senior citizens, agreement with the Huntington Hearing and Speech Center for, to perform OSHA-required hearing conservation services as needed, an amendment to lease agreement with the Site Tech Wireless regarding the wireless communication facility at the MSF, Professional service agreement with Broom Networks for emergency on call technical support regarding the town's data communications network. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town board to approve the settlement of following matters settlement, settlement of property damage claim against Encompass Insurance, the amount of $3,522.81. With Nancy Lomas in the amount of $433.41, and with Merchants Insurance Company against the town in the amount of $1,170.74. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town Board to accept uh, check deposits as for the matters of A, B, and C of the agenda. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Up. Oh, Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. He's absent. Uh, town board also to release a performance bond the amount of $156,735 together with a cash deposit amount of $2,000 and a certificate of insurance posted for the subdivision known as Burger States and according to the agenda item. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town board to approve the following personal matters. Promotion of Jessica Pangallo, a part-time appointment of Craig Becker, part-time appointment of Ronald, Ronald Infantino, accept the volunteer service of Jeff Bicora, season appointment of Nick, Nicholas Gonzalez, a salary change for Michael Giannis, title and salary change for Michelle Guerreri, season appointment of Claudia Chandler. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Uh, do we have uh, people to be heard sign in? Yes. Oh, here you are. Supervisor? Yes. Are we using the three minute uh, rule tonight? Yes, three minute rule in effect. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You I also have a read on, Supervisor. Say it again? One you have a read on. Oh, yes. I forgot that. Sorry. Town board to authorize the clerk to advertise for public hearing to build at 2 p.m. for every fourth to consider the town's entry onto certain real property located at 263-265 Indian Head Road, Kings Park, reputedly owned by Cross Road, Cross Road Realty for the purpose of remediating and removing the structures as well as any construction trailers thereat which have been des designated as unsafe 
in accordance with the unsafe building standard as set forth in Chapter 112-25A of the Smithtown Town Code as for the re recommendation of the re building department and the town attorney. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I, I know there were some folks here who wish to be heard on the Montclair Avenue uh, rehabilitation uh, yard. Um, but with your indulgence, I would I ask that the, uh, you allow us to have a presentation by the town environmental director as to exactly what is entailed in that rehabilitation. Board. You could take that out, it's easier. My name is Russell Barnett. I am the Environmental Protection Director of the town. I'm here tonight to summarize for everyone the recently discussed town plans for the modification of the Montclair Avenue yard. This is an illustration of the yard and the surrounding area orient everyone. This is 25 running through here. We are presently right now in the Eugene Canatero Smithtown Senior Center which is this building here. Across the street is Smithtown Concrete, Competition Subaru, Montclair Avenue and Rutherford Street. The outline in yellow is what we refer to as the Montclair Yard. You'll see here in the northern portion, immediately adjacent to the yard, are homes, literally next door. The history of this property is that it is a former town landfill. Many years ago, it was a hole in the ground where the town buried garbage and yard waste. When the hole was filled, it was covered over with two feet of clay, which was the requirement at the time to cap the landfill. Following that capping of the landfill, this property has been used by the Smithtown Highway Department as an operations and emergency yard. As a former landfill, this property is regulated by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. New York State DEC sets strict limits on the types and amounts of material allowable on the site. The principal control or limit is that per DEC, the town is not allowed to have at any one time more than 15,000 cubic yards of street sweepings and uncontaminated brick, concrete, and soil, such as the broken concrete slabs that the highway department brings in for reuse. The highway department has on occasion, over the years, exceeded these limits, accumulating more street sweepings, brush, logs, stumps, broken concrete, asphalt millings, and scrap metal than is allowable. In addition, this yard has been used for the disposal of snow following major storms where snow would be trucked into the site and piled high. As you can imagine, that operation, many of you were in the neighborhood, occurred at all hours. The town has been developing a plan for the modification of this yard. The plans being developed are actually to reduce the activity at this site. In order to comply with the New York State DEC limits and to make the facility a better neighbor. This is an environmental improvement project, not the development of a new transfer station as has been discussed in the community. Parts of the plan have already been implemented. 
there has been a barrier placed in this location to prevent vehicle access to this long, narrow portion of the site to avoid the impacts upon the neighbors who immediately adjoin that site, which would occur if vehicles had access to that area. Another portion of the plan that's already been implemented is that we have ceased using this site for the disposal of snow. For the last two storms, snow has been disposed of across 25 at the highway yard rather than here at the Montclair yard, eliminating the truck trips to bring that snow, the backup beepers, et cetera. Scales will be installed at this site. The current entrance to the site is right here in this location. The plan that is being developed is to keep it in that portion of the site and perhaps even move it closer to 25A. The purpose of the scales is to comply with DEC requirements so that we can accurately record what comes in and what goes out so we can assure the New York State DEC that we are not accumulating material at this site, which is their concern. In addition, these scales will enable town taxpayers to get reimbursement from federal and state agencies in the event of a disaster or emergency. This site is used under emergency purposes, such as Hurricane Sandy, for the stockpiling of debris from the storm before it can be processed and shipped off site. Not having scales there complicates our ability to get reimbursement from state and federal agencies and therefore results in a burden on taxpayers. The scales are designed to solve that problem for all of us. The only new planned activity at this site would be from a small area set aside for the drop-off of construction debris and old computers by homeowners. There would be no access to the site by commercial entities or contractors. To put things in perspective, the current facility that we operate up in Kings Park, which presently services the whole town, receives 11 trips a day on average throughout the year from homeowners delivering construction and demolition debris. Most construction projects in town are done not by the homeowner, but by contractors. Contractors do not bring their debris to any of the town sites. They dispose of it out of town at commercial landfills and commercial debris processing centers. This would only accept debris from homeowners. Lastly, the plans under development include new site controls, fencing, and security cameras to prevent unauthorized access to the site, and landscaping along Montclair Avenue to improve this facility's appearance as you approach the neighborhoods along Montclair. In summary, the plan does not include any access to the site by garbage trucks. It does not involve allowing any garbage on site. It does not include any access to the site by any commercial landscapers or home improvement contractors. It eliminates use of the site for snow disposal. It reduces the amount of material being stored on site. It reduces the area truck traffic to and from the site. And it permanently closes the part of the site that is next door to Holmes. That concludes my presentation. Okay. I would be very happy to answer any questions that the much. board may have. Okay, so we'll go to those who wish to be heard. Don. Anthony DeRosmo, did I say it right? Good evening, councilman. Good evening, neighbors. My name is Anthony DeRosmo. I live at 135 Montclair Avenue. Uh, here I am right here. I've been a resident here for uh, 16 years. I have heard many things about this piece of property in the past. Um, this is relatively new to me over the past couple of days. This has been brought to my attention by one of my neighbors. Um, interesting what you're saying about reduction of the uh, 
garbage coming to this area as is. Um, however, one thing you mentioned tonight concerns me, um, household computers. I am in the computer industry. Uh, many old computers contain mercury and lead. I'm very curious to know if this happens, what happens with those materials, who's sifting through them. I already have two learning disabled children, one with autism and another one with ADHD. Uh, those factors have been linked to those uh, diagnoses in the, in the past. Um, mysteriously, nobody's ever stepped up to actually say that it is. But uh, another main concern is uh, traffic, um, which has already been promised in the past to be reduced um, and have not seen anything of such sorts uh, take place. Um, many times my children play right in the front of the driveway and uh, at the edge of the uh, wooded residential property, which is zoned uh, right next door to my house, is uh, severely overgrown, and uh, most traffic coming down the road cannot see uh, beyond that piece of property and always poses a threat to uh, even pulling out of my driveway. I've been many times in the past uh, just making a U-turn with my lawnmower. I have been uh, nearly hit by uh, a car. Um, dirt and uh, dust is probably uh, another huge factor for my concerns of what else happens here. Um, I spend a, uh, an amount close to say $1,200 a year just power washing my property in my house uh, annually. Uh, it's gotten so bad I can't even open my windows nowadays uh, and rely upon uh, air conditioning for most of the time. And um, severely concerned with the size of the scales that you talk about that will be installed. Uh, what do they look like? You're saying that there's going to be a barrier for making the drive from where the property begins and ends to make it look uh, more pleasable to the eye. Uh, how big are the scales? Do we have any idea of what's being installed in terms of size? Be a, a, a curious question for me. Barnett. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, to be clear, the barrier that we talk about runs in this direction right here. And it is designed to stop vehicles that are on this site from entering this narrow strip immediately adjacent to homeowners. That's the barrier. What we're talking about Montclair Avenue here, as most of you know, the highway department has built a berm. And the current plan is to rehabilitate that berm and to plant it and landscape that berm so as to make it more visually appealing as you approach the neighborhood. With regard to the heavy metals in the computers, I share your concern for that. And I can tell you that what we do as the town's environmental department is currently at Kings Park, and it would be the same here. We use a weather-protected, full in, fully enclosed metal box where people drop off the computer. It goes into the metal box. We have a company that has won a bid to buy those old used computers for us to scrap them. When we have enough in the box, we call the company. It picks up the box and takes it away. But the metals are in the computer. The computer is in the box, completely weather protected and secured. Uh, dust. The dust. All right. Presently, what you have at this site is on occasion the highway department has had as much as 43,000 cubic yards of street sweepings piled high and large. Uh, they've had over 20,000 cubic yards at a time of yard waste, both in violation of DEC limits for the site. The dust is because the pile is too high and the wind can catch the pile and it blows the dust around the neighborhood. The intention here in installing the scales and fencing off the yard is to reduce the size of those piles as a way of managing the dust and reducing the impacts on the neighbors. The other portion of dust control here is that we are looking at, once we put in the entrance and the scales, we're going to pave the driveway that the trucks move around, the highway trucks, so as to avoid or reduce 
the potential of dust from the highway truck tires operating on what is now a bare dirt surface. Gary Chastain. Um, I'm a resident also. I live at 18 Rutherford Street, which is right around here. And, um, you know, living in back of that, uh, the dump zone or the, uh, the town property, it's not really that bad other than the dust and the trucks from time to time. But we're just really concerned now moving forward with the scales and the steel container, what that computer is going to sound like smashing into it, you know, from a, from a height. And, and we deal with a lot as it is with the noise. So what our concerns are is our investment in our homes. What is this going to do to that investment? Is it going to increase it? We kind of don't think it's going to increase our values at all. As a matter of fact, we feel it will decrease the values. As you come down the road to our nice houses, you're going to now be passing scales and trucks coming in and out. And Although Mr. Barnett answered a lot of questions and it sounded really good, just like the deal they made with the town. You know, it sounded good at first when they were going to limit the use, but now we have a lot of trucks in and out and a lot of dirt pouring back and forth. And that goes with the territory. We understand that. But we have a suggestion, and what the suggestion is, is instead of decreasing the value of our houses, end the road. If you end the road by Bill's house, which is right about here, right over here, right here, and make a court right here for us all with like a little buffer zone there and stop all of the trucks and the dirt from flying down the road, it'll increase the value of all of those houses. So with an increase of value to all of our uh, investments, I don't see us having a problem with it. So is that dead end of the street, that, uh, what you just described? That would dead end the street with just uh, Whatever, however wide the street is, making a turnaround for any emergency vehicles or anything, it would be a perfect solution for all of us. And okay. it would increase the values of our properties. We could look at that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas Bodas. Bodas. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I live on uh, 148 St. James Avenue South, which um, just to reiterate, uh, there's talk of maybe a buffer zone that we can create. Um, I think town of Islip, town of Brookhaven, I have some uh, pictures that I printed out, uh, Google Earth, where they have maybe, maybe five acres of trees uh, that would surround the area. Uh, kind of create more of a, you know, a pleasing view uh, and also, you know, help with the dust, debris, you know, from the site. Um, you know, just something that other townships do to kind of create an area where, you know, maybe it's not right on top of houses, you know, right on top of, uh, you know, residential areas, you know, things of that sort. Um, Please speak you know, in the mic. Turn around or something Please like speak that. in the mic. Yeah, if we could do turnarounds or, you know, some kind of, uh, of a cul-de-sac or something like that, even if we could use resources left over from the 347 construction, you know, if you have stuff that's... Uh, you know, going to go to waste, you know, maybe we can use that asphalt or something like that to, you know, actually create, you know, a wider roadway or turn around for trucks or just something we could do there. But um, I have some pictures, like I said, I printed out town of Islip, town of Brookhaven, what they've done to uh, create buffer zones. You know, it'd be five acres, six acres of trees, just something, uh, just to make it a little bit more uh, pleasing to the eye, take care of some of the dust issues that people have. Uh, if there's anything we could do. Thank you. Thank you. Russell. Uh, if I could uh, see my picture, so pass sure, it. Sure, just pass it up. Russell, uh, you, uh, the last two speakers spoke about scales. You want, want, might want to describe what the scales look like. You don't have to All right, the scales that are on discussion. The scales that are under construction would be located, in, uh, under consideration, would be located in this area down in here. They're built into the ground. They maybe come up about three feet. Trucks drive into the site, up onto the scale. That enables them to be weighed. 
they leave the material, and we're talking about highway trucks, they leave their material at the designated pile. On the way out, they weigh again. That way we, we now know exactly how many pounds of street sweepings or broken concrete were brought into the site. They'll be computerized. We can keep a record of what we've got on site so we can comply with the DEC regulations and ensure that we're not building piles to impact the neighborhood. These are not scales that are going to be visible from the, from the neighbors. They're not big intrusive things. Uh, in addition to that, what we're looking at is setting the scales far enough back that there'll be no waiting times for highway trucks on the road. The trucks will drive into the site, and to the extent that they have to wait to be weighed, they'll be sitting on the site waiting to be weighed, not on Montclair. With regard to the last speaker's concern about noise from the drop, dropping of computers, computers are not dropped under our mechanism. These are walk-in boxes. The boxes are roofed, they're sided, they have a floor. You walk in a door, you put your computer on top of the stack, and you walk out. They're not dropped. Thank you. Uh, uh, Robert Demoustis. Good evening, members of the board and uh, Supervisor Vecchio. My name is Robert Demoustis. I live at 145 Montclair Avenue. Um, about 25 years ago, and as Mr. Barnett uh, eloquently kind of mentioned, what we went through here, we, we had a lengthy time here where we made agreements uh, of the use for that, limited use of that facility. And I'm going to rehash a little bit of this, but it was uh, supposed to only be used for old asphalt that could be ground up and reused on the roads, uh, concrete that could be reused as base material for roads. The area was supposed to be kept very clean. In addition, as indicated, the berms were supposed to be built and growth was supposed to be put on them. Uh, the growth was never maintained. Uh, there's an issue down there, there's no water. So stuff didn't want to grow. Um, piles that were in the site were supposed to be kept at levels below eyesight from the road, so we couldn't see them. Well, I'll go down there and take a look. Streets would be swept weekly. Okay, we, we seem to have dropped that. I have spoken with the town highway superintendent. He has uh, since started that again. Thank you. And minimize dust. Well, we have a lot of dust issues down here. You just have to come down on a good windy day and just look down the road. As indicated, that's uh, a problem with all of our residents in the area. What have we had to deal with? Obviously, excessive truck traffic from the highway department because they use it as a shortcut back and forth. They don't want to go out to Jericho Turnpike. Excessive car dealership traffic constantly. Rush hour traffic that shortcuts through there because Jericho Turnpike backs up. Excessive dust, dirt, anytime the wind blows. I clean my house and power wash it three to four times a year. Okay. Fires that have sm smoked us out literally down there. Okay. Smell from rotting uh, mulch debris, uh, especially since Hurricane Sandy. Increased rodents. Okay. What will the uh, what will the new proposal do? Everything that I just indicated, possibly, um, on a daily basis. I'm opposed to the, the present proposal, okay? But I would like to make a, a couple recommendations. And my recommendations would be, phase one, repurchase the five acres of land that was sold to the concrete factory. was supposed to be used by the concrete factory to store cement blocks. It became a dumping yard for the concrete factory. Okay? It's presently a real eyesore. Use that site as the area that you really want to work with. Take the five acres of land that you were that you're purchasing down here and create a green belt. You've got a green belt up here already. Okay, I'm sorry. You have a green belt already up in this area. Create that five acres in here as a green belt and a new environmental habitat. In addition, as we talked about, create a circle at house number 120, 128 uh, as a turnaround and shut down Montclair Avenue. That gets rid of all our issues with traffic, et cetera. And the circle actually helps the school buses because the school buses don't want to back up. And that was an issue that we discussed last time. Okay, if you put the circle in, they'll be able to make the turn. Okay, in addition, leave one lane left on Montclair into that circle with a gate. 
for emergency, um, uh, emergency responses. Uh, the, that neighborhood will only have one means of entry, which is off of Arlington. If something happens to that road, then uh, the issue that would become is would be blocked off for any kind of emergency access. Well, by leaving one lane with a gate, that eliminates the emergency access issue. Okay. All right, by, Robert, doing all, uh, by doing all this, Mr. Vecchio, we now have given ourselves a buffer like you have in Kings Park. And then I would say phase two is look at purchasing the property across the street, down the road, as uh, an environmental habitat and a green zone also. Now we've got a complete buffer from the entire industrial center down that's south of us. And the northern end is completely separated from that industrial center. That would be my proposal. I have it written here if you'd okay. like to have copies. You could hand it up. Thank you. Mr. Thank, De you. Thank you. Mr. Desimini? I want to thank hello I want to thank the board for allowing me to address you okay to be specific uh, our house is located at 128 Montclair Avenue I'm your neighbor I've, we've lived there for 28 years uh, let me start by saying uh, stating some of my objections and concerns about this and a lot of them already been sta stated the idea of creating a recycling center flanked on all sides of this property, east, west, and north, is all residential. You're putting a recycling center in the middle of a residential zone. Now, the yard is, I, I, I measured it off, is less than about 800 feet from the, from the first residence going north on Montclair Avenue. First, the increased traffic. Uh, it's bad enough that uh, Montclair Avenue is used by car dealers, uh, trucks to take shortcuts, town trucks, speeders have used it uh, constantly coming down there. Uh, now this, I can only envision as getting worse with residences carting uh, trailers down through, winding their way through the residences to get to this yard. Second, I've been to the Kings Park place many times. There are odors when you go in there. You can't avoid that. People dump everything. On Montclair, we do have odors drifting over from time to time. That can only get worse with increased traffic and residential uh, debris. We currently uh, experience dust storms from time to time. Now, we've lived there for 28 years. Oh, that was a fast. No, you got a minute. Go. <laughs> we've lived there for 28 years, and uh, yes, occasionally we get dust and odors coming from the yard. I guess m my family, we just got used to it. We got used to the noise. We got, and, and to be honest with you, the highway department's been fairly good neighbors. Uh, they're in at 7 in the morning, they're out at 3 in the afternoon, they don't work on Saturdays. Open it up to the, to the consumer to dump trash, now we're going to have Saturday traffic. Saturday traffic means kids throughout that, <laughs> Rutherford, Montclair is loaded with kids. Uh, there's an increased uh, problem of uh, worry about the danger that's going to occur. I have other things to say, but I know my time's short. Mr. So Desimini, Mr. Barnett explained, there'll be no trash dumping. Oh, I understand that. Okay, so that's eliminated. Um, it's demolition equipment, yes. In, indicated that uh, dust that you normally would get is going to be somewhat mitigated because the driveways are going to be, and entrances are going to be asphalted. And the piles are going to be whole, held to a minimum on the DE standard, so that will immediately lessen wherever dust can arise. Understood. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Patricia McGovern. Good evening. My name is Patricia McGovern. I live at 142 St. James Avenue South, and we've lived there for about 28 years. Um, the problem that we're having, and I don't, uh, 
you've heard a lot of it, you know, about the traffic or whatever. I happen to be a corner house. I'm the corner house. So I get to see a lot of what's going on. And when all of this has happened, I mean, I've talked to my neighbors. Traffic is absolutely one of the most horrible things. They come down. They see, you know, everything that's down there. They see the yard or whatever. They fly down there. They fly down that street. At that stop sign is a bus stop also. We get the traffic. We get town highway traffic. We get um, the cars coming down there from the, the car dealerships that think it's their own testing grounds. We have the, uh, I don't know if it's the cement factory now or one of the factories have now rented out to dart fuel trucks. So at 7 o'clock in the morning, we have the fleet of dart fuel trucks that come out, come through our neighborhood, and are in and out all day. I actually um, sat when we looked at this and basically did a study um, of the traffic that comes through our neighborhood. And basically, in a day, between the hours of 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, we have over 200 vehicles that come into our neighborhood that have absolutely nothing to do with our neighborhood. It is a cut through. We have wrote letters. We have called the 4th Precinct. We've asked them to stop it. We've called the dealerships. We wrote letters to the dealerships. And their basic thing is, it's a public road. We can do what we want. We're afraid to even let our children ride their bicycles in the street around the corner because that's how bad the traffic is there, back and forth. The dust, I know you're sitting there saying, you know, it's going to somewhat eliminate. It's still going to be there. So we're doing the dust. We're doing the odors. Speaking to my neighbors, the rats have gotten out of control. They have ho we have holes in our yards. They're all over the place now. So and one of the things that we were saying was, um, and one of the suggestions as to make the town, to end that road and to make a turnaround there, make it for emergency vehicles, that would definitely help alleviate some of the problems that are in the neighborhood and make it seem, you know, to us or help us to, you know, have a nice, safe, clean environment for our families. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Hadel. Hello, Chris Hadel, 151 St. James Avenue. Basically, live up this way. I guess a lot of the issues have been addressed, but um, certainly the traffic. I mean, you know, with the people coming in to drop it off, there's going to be a lot more traffic coming through the area, coming from Woodlawn, Lake Avenue. So probably the turnaround is a is a good idea. Uh, are we still going to do the construction? Are we still going to do the land like Hurricane Sandy debris, and is that still happening there? Or? You want to answer that? I, I, I can. You can. Yes, the site has On a mic, Russell. Yes, the site has functioned as an emergency debris processing point for the town. The town has a limited number of options when it comes to a storm like Sandy. So yes, the site would still be used for that. However, one of the improvements that we're trying to make based upon our experience with the last storm is that the budget includes purchasing a grinder that would simply be stationed at this site rather than having to rely on hauling one from Kings Park. The significance of that is that without a grinder on site, the schedule of grinding the material and getting it transported out of there is dependent upon the availability of equipment in use by others. So by positioning a grinder here, what can happen is the material can be processed and sent out and not be allowed to be built up into as large a pile and as large a fire hazard as we've experienced in the past. Okay, thank you very much. I guess, um, well, that sounds reasonable. I guess my biggest concern is still, you know, the traffic coming back from the neighborhood up to this thing. You know, maybe the dead end or the turnaround would be the answer. Um, thank you. Thank you. Ed Stoll? Um, my name's Ed Stoll. I live at 153 St. James Avenue South. Um, I've lived in St. James for in excess of 40 years, uh, and, and I've basically, we love our neighborhood, all of us. Um, 
My concerns are safety concerns. Uh, these blocks that we're talking about in, in, in and out of these uh, just north of, of here are all dead end blocks. There's no outlet for us. Traffic is horrific anyhow. Jericho Turnpike has become uh, extremely difficult to deal with. So what Montclair has become is an outlet to anybody who's encountering traffic on, on Jericho Turnpike. Now, if we're talking about uh, town trucks coming in and out of these, these uh, blocks, um, it's going to be a problem on Rutherford Avenue uh, because the traffic is just ridiculous anyhow. Uh, the kids can only come out this one way, out to the street, riding bikes, walking, that sort of thing like that. I'm, I'm really concerned about that. I was hoping that if this is going to happen, that uh, the town trucks won't be uh, heading into our neighborhood on Rutherford, Rutherford Avenue, uh, that they would have to use Jericho Turnpike. I mean, that, that would be ridiculous. We have like the, the uh, traffic from Jericho Turnpike, we have uh, traffic from the dealerships, and now we're gonna have uh, trucks from the town heading in and out of these blocks. I would hope that they would be prohibited from coming into these dead so end blocks. Is, is these your, are dead end blocks there. Is your suggestion that uh, once the tra town truck enters the yard and de deposits the material, that he then exit and go out Jericho Turnpike? Yes. You could look at that. That, that, would be, uh, that would be extremely helpful if this is gonna happen. I'm okay. hoping that none of these trucks will be coming in and out of that neighborhood. But safety concerns are my, uh, my great concern here. Okay. Well, thank you for your thank suggestion. Thank you. Michael, I'm sorry, is this Stoli? Did I say that correctly? Story, I'm sorry. That's okay, my lousy handwriting. Didn't go to Catholic school. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Story, 11 Lenore Place, Hop Hog. Um, my reason for being here is completely different than everybody else's. I'd like to wish the, the board a, a happy new year. And I'm still with my issue with regarding the generator for my neighborhood and the other two generators that you were working on. We were told numerous times that this should be done this year. Yeah, and they will be. We have our capital budget for the purchase of those generators, and that will be purchased shortly. I, I can't say a month or two, but we have to get the funding in place, and that will occur. I suspect by the end of the year they should be there. Terrific. Not sooner. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Mr. Carlson, Toby Carlson. Members of the town board, uh, Supervisor Vecchio, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I know today um, I'm not here about uh, Montclair Avenue. I'm here about Old Northport Road. And um, I appreciate today uh, the town board addressing my letter um, and the issues. I appreciate uh, uh, Planning Director and uh, Director Barnett um, going over the issues with you guys. And I just wanted to, you know, just take a moment to say that um, you know, whatever I need to do, uh, whatever uh, to work with Mr. Barnett and uh, the, the planning director, I'm willing to do. And my phone is always open uh, with any questions that need to be answered uh, uh, regarding that letter. And I appreciate it. Happy New Year. And um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Barnett, on, on Montclair Avenue, are there restrictions um, to quantities of materials now? And is there a time frame that you're allowed to keep it there? is I notice one of the questions is on debris, and a lot of times the quicker the debris moves out of the facility, the less impacts it has on the surrounding areas. I'm sure that the DEC regs have some way to address that. Yes, please. You need to do it on the mic. Yes, there are limits imposed by DEC, and that is what is uh, motivating this entire project. Uh, Mr. Carlson is correct. When you accumulate organic debris, the longer it sits, the more prone it is to generating odors. The longer it sits, the greater fire hazard you have. The bigger the pile you build, the greater the fire hazard you have. That is what is motivating this project. We want to bring down those piles and reduce that kind of activity on this site. As I mentioned before, part of the plan being developed is to actually have a grinding machine there so that we can grind the material as it's received 
and ship it out rather than accumulate it and build piles. Uh, actually, I do not have that at my fingertips. If you would like to see me after the meeting, give me your phone number. I'll get it for you tomorrow, and I'll give you a call. I also invite you, if you'd like, to come down to our existing facility in Kings Park, and we can show you that operation. Thank you very much, Russell. Okay, that concludes the evening. So I'll move to uh, close the meeting. Second. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. And Councilwoman Noah? Yes.